when I was in medical school, the neonatal vitamin K shots always puzzled me a little bit. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense that nature would design humans to be so vitamin K deficient at birth. Um, again, none of this podcast is meant to be taken as medical advice, nor should it be, but I will muse on this. I would hypothesize that most mothers are not getting enough animal-based vitamin K, which is vitamin K2, which is menaquinone rather than phyloquinone or um, other types of what we would consider to be K1, which is plant-based vitamin K. If you are familiar with my work, you are familiar with the Rotterdam study, which I can show, which is an observational study, but what it revealed was that those people who had the most vitamin K2 menaquinone in their diet had the best outcomes in terms of cardiovascular disease, specifically cardiac events and calcific aortic sclerosis. There was no correlation with vitamin K1. And this is in a population in Rotterdam. And this is a very interesting study because vitamin K2 occurs almost exclusively in animal foods. There's a little bit of vitamin K2, which tapes in many different forms, MK1 through MK11, with MK4 being the most bioavailable, probably the most bioactive form of menaquinone in humans, though we see many different types of menaquinones that are considered to be vitamin K2, technically. So what we find is that these are really only present in animal foods, except perhaps something like natto, which is fermented soybeans but it's not in the soybeans, it's in product of the bacteria that are fermenting the soybeans. So really there are no occurrences of vitamin K2 in plant foods. You might get a little bit of vitamin K2 or in the case of natto, a moderate amount of vitamin K2, which is great in a fermented soybean paste, but a lot of Americans don't eat that. And I wouldn't eat the soybeans in the first place because of all the other plant toxins that are in those soybeans. I'm not a fan of those in general. There's a much easier way to get vitamin K2, which is egg yolks, liver, meat, et cetera, animal foods, even uh, dairy that is from grass-fed cows or non-grass-fed cows usually has vitamin K2 in it. And so what I believe this vitamin K shot being necessary for many infants to prevent hemorrhagic disease of the newborn is telling us is that most women during the pregnancy are not getting enough vitamin K2. Uh, I wanna show you guys a picture of the vitamin K that is given to infants. You can see this is uh, phytonadione, phytonadione, yeah. You can see here, this is phytonadione, which is the essentially the phyloquinone. This is vitamin K1. Infants are not given vitamin K2, which is ironic, I suppose. Um, I think that within um, medical circles, people think of vitamin K1 as being involved in clotting, but what we know is that the body is pretty good at retroconverting K2 into K1, but not the reverse, which is evidenced by the Rotterdam study showing that there was no correlation between vitamin K1 intake and cardiovascular disease outcomes or calcific aortic sclerosis, but vitamin K2 led to better outcomes. This is the Rotterdam study for those who are interested. Dietary intake of menaquinone is associated with a reduced risk of coronary heart disease. The Rotterdam study, and you can see here in the abstract, the risk of coronary heart disease, all-cause mortality, and aortic atherosclerosis, which they call calcific aortic sclerosis, was studied in tertials of energy-adjusted vitamin K intake and after adjustment for age, gender, BMI, smoking, diabetes, education, and dietary factors, the relative risk of CHD mortality was reduced in the mid and upper tertials of dietary menaquinone compared to the lower tertile. Relative, relative risk was 0.73 with a confidence interval uh, uh, between 0.45 and 1.17. Um, and there was a relative risk of 0.43, which had a confidence interval, which did not cross one, <laughs> respectively, in the upper tertial. Now, the upper tertial, I believe, was only 35 micrograms of vitamin K2 per day, which is a moderate amount of vitamin K2, but you'll get way more than that if you're eating grass-fed meat and organs and egg yolks every day. Who knows what would have happened in, if they had done quartiles or quintiles and had those be 50 or 75 micrograms of vitamin K2. Most of us on an animal-based diet are getting uh, probably close to 100 micrograms of vitamin K2 a day. So you can see, if you want to read that study, that's a very interesting one. And it speaks to the importance of animal-based nutrients. Back to kids. Infants are given traditionally in the hospital a vitamin K1 shot to help with clotting. More parents are refusing that, I think, because they are concerned about babies getting 
shots in the hospital at birth, which is their choice, but this is leading to more hemorrhagic disease of the newborn because many mothers, I believe in our society, are not eating enough vitamin K2 in their diet. And what do we know? That during pregnancy, nutrition of mom is going to influence baby's K2 status baby's vitamin K status in general, both vitamin K1 and K2. K2, I think, is the super, super important one. Many people believe that Weston Price was referring to vitamin K2 when he famously termed a substance the X factor, uh, the X nutrient, the fat-soluble nutrient, as vitamin K2 is, that he seemed to correlate with good health in these indigenous populations that he studied who were eating raw animal products in some source, whether it was organs or butter or dairy uh, of some sort or eggs. All of these animal product consuming cultures seem to have robust health. He was studying this in the 1930s, I believe. And there was a nutrient that he termed the X factor that was yet to have been determined at the time. Nutrition is always evolving. We still don't know about many nutrients, I believe, for humans that are present, especially in animal foods, perhaps in plant foods too. But I continue to believe that most plant foods and vegetables are not great for humans, nor do they lead to optimal health. So mothers aren't getting enough vitamin K2. Mothers aren't eating enough meat. Mothers are not eating enough organs. Mothers are not eating enough eggs, raw dairy, all those kind of things. So I should say that raw dairy is something that is shunned by many mothers, perhaps wisely in pregnancy due to risk of listeriosis in the baby. 